Today I'm going to be discussing a few things that I sold on my Etsy shop. Um, this video is 100% inspired by Crazy Lamp Lady. She does a lot of these sold videos where she just shows how much she sold, how much of a profit she made. I have made quite a few mistakes the first few months, so you will um, encounter some of these mistakes very likely because it has to do with like pricing and shipping, that kind of stuff. I'm talking about gross profit here, so I'm only telling you the price I sold it on Etsy for and how much I paid for it, but there are also fees and other things. It's not really my net, actual real net profit. It's sort of like half gross profit. Etsy takes about a 5% fee on everything and you also have a transaction fee and the listing fee as well. So I'm starting at the very beginning when I opened my shop. I think one of the first things I sold was a set of dishes. That one was by Thomas, which is German, uh, Rosenthal, Rosenthal. It was a sugar and creamer and a set of five cups and saucers. And I actually made <laughs> my first mistake there, which I definitely, definitely learned from the hard way. So um, the lady bought the sugar and the creamer, which was a listing. And then there was a separate listing of the five coffee cups and saucers and I had mentioned that it's five coffee cups and saucers and then you can on Etsy you can choose how many one one two three four five but in the actual listing I didn't specify that the price was only for one coffee cup and saucer so very likely she didn't read it very very well she thought oh I'm getting like for 13 euros I'm getting five coffee cups and saucer which was technically the price for one she opened a package and then she was like why is there only one in there and then she mailed me and I explained to her the situation but I was like what you know what it's my fault it wasn't very clear so if you are willing to pay only the shipping cost I'm gonna send you all the other cups and saucers for free because at that point I don't think I had any reviews and I was terrified to get a one-star review of someone <laughs> so I was like let's just do it like this and then I changed all my other listings that had multiples in them and learn from my mistake so yeah, I bought this set of cups and saucers for four euros and I sold them for 33, but technically they are worth a lot more. The second item I sold is a very little fat lava vase and that one was by Okra Pottery and I got that one at, I think, a small thrift store in uh, Bremen in Germany for like two euros, maybe three, and I ended up selling it for 30 euros. Then the next item I sold was a mug and that was a mug that I thrifted in the Netherlands. It was this really nice stoneware ceramic mug, kind of like a speckled pottery and had this very kind of sage green color. Very interesting. I sold that for 15 euros and I actually um, got that for like 65 cents at a thrift store. So that was really nice. I would have kept it if I already didn't have so many mugs. And I think that that one actually went to either like just an Instagram follower, but maybe also a um, someone who watches my videos because she also tagged me on Instagram and all. So that was very nice of her. The next item is a mouth blown glass vase. That one is a Murano style vase that I got at an estate sale that I paid around two euros for and I sold that for 22. It had like a little bit of discoloration, that's why I was only asking 22 for it. And then I sold a fat lava vase, that one was one of my favorite finds. That one is by Bai and I got that at a thrift store in Germany for $6.99 and I ended up selling it for 37 euros and that one actually went to the States. So, um, and at that time, by the way, I also charged less for shipping to kind of attract more buyers, but I have then, since then, upped my shipping costs because it just cost me um, also a lot of money. Now I've also on my way to, I think, around 70 sales-ish, so um, I can ask somewhat more and I'm only charging what shipping is literally costing, actually. I sold a planter and that planter I paid nothing for because I got it in Germany out of a basement that I could have dug my way through. They had two planters um, and I actually cut the other one. The other one's in my kitchen right now because I really like that one. And I sold that for 30 euros. That one I also went to the United States. So I um, pretty much only made profit of that because I didn't have any costs. Then I sold a, another 1960s West Germany vase. That one I didn't know the maker. I did sell it anyways because it looks really cool. And I think I paid around two euros for that. Also when I lived in Germany, that's where I got it. I sold that one for 30. That one actually went to the Netherlands. I actually like saying like where things went to. I don't know if you find that annoying. 
but I always find it so interesting that I'm just here in my little house and then like some random person from the United States just finds my stuff and buys it, which is sometimes so crazy to me. I found a set of anchor hawking dishes in the Netherlands for 17 euros. There is this one coffee pot, then I had two sets of espresso cups, a set of normal cups and all the sauces and a serving plate. So I sold the coffee pot, I think it's a coffee pot, and which was interesting. If you do know Anchor Hawking a little bit, it's actually milk glass, but that pot was made from ceramics, not from milk glass, and it was marked Anchor Hawking, but also West Germany, which was very um, curious. But I um, paid probably like, I don't know what to say, because I got the whole set, maybe 150 for that thing or two euros, and I sold it for 45. That one went all the way to Australia, and the buyer was really happy because he actually put a picture on the Etsy and he has like this whole cabinet full of anchor hawking and apparently this thing he had never seen before. Then I sold a Florence Opaline mouth blown vase which I now feel like I've definitely undersold that one. I sold it for 65 euros and I got it for around 2 or 250 at an estate sale in Germany. Um, I actually did sell that to a well supplier of really high-end glassware in New York that also supplies glass and vases and that kind of stuff for movies and series. But if they're reselling it, then I probably did not charge enough. But that's okay, I still made a very quite good profit on that. I found a set of, a very large set, uh, three boxes full of Norwegian stoneware in the Netherlands and that is called Porsgrund and I found the whole set for 30 euros, that's what I paid for them. I still have quite a few left but I also sold quite a few. So the first item I sold was the sugar and creamer set and that one I sold for 40 euros and at that point I had already made then all my money back for the whole set and I still had a ton left. So I sold that for 40 and yeah, I don't know, I paid like 1 euro an item or something, probably even less. So maybe the sugar and creamer pot was like 150. I sold some more items of the Porsgrund set that somebody got and um, I did have a little bit of a sale going there. I sold one dinner plate one cup and saucer, one soup plate, and one very small serving bowl. So the whole price was 47 euros and they had a discount of 14 euro 80. So my whole profit ended up being 59 euros and 20 cents. Then someone else from Germany decided to get quite a few of those postcard dishes. And that was also when my sale was going on on dishes. So he bought um, a set of eight egg cups and then one of those kind of big serving pots and then he bought the two other serving bowls I still had that were quite large and he ended up paying 224 euros for the whole set then when I went thrifting in the fall I found this amazing small purple fat lava vase that I paid 15 euros for and I listed it and I think either the same or the next day it sold for 80 euros so my profit there was 65 which was uh, very great and that one went to like Scandinavia summer Finland or something no Norway it went to Norway and then I sold more postcard dishes somebody bought seven dinner plates and they actually paid 140 euros for them then I had a set of porcelain vases I don't sell a lot of porcelain but I did like these because they were like really nice like 70s with this kind of almost gold colored design and they were by Bavaria Heinrich Zeib and I think for the whole set together I paid seven euros and I did end up selling them for 70 so my profit here was 63 euros and they went to America I found a, a little vase for one euro and that one was a West Germany piece by Marschner Kunsttöpferei which was a smaller but well-known company back in the day that one was from the 1960s and I love that one that one I paid a euro for it sold it for 25 so profit 24 euros and that one went to the United States then I sold this little like Murano vase and I feel like I probably could have asked more for it. I'm still kind of unsure when it comes to art glass. Sometimes I'm more confident when it comes to West Germany ceramics. Art glass is still something that I'm kind of struggling with with pricing. But um, I got this vase at an estate sale for two euros and fifty cents, and I sold it for thirty-five. And that one actually did go to someone in the Netherlands. And that one's really nice because it had those really nice copper flecks, and I love those 
mouth blown like art glass vases that have copper or gold or silver flecks on them i think they look so beautiful next up is a mug and that one's kind of funny it's a mug i sold for 12 euros because i had a sale going on i got that mug for i think 75 cents so my total profit was 11 euros 25 cents um and i saw the lady's address and i'm like the heck she lives literally in my village like i can walk to her house i mailed her and i ended up dropping off the mug at her house i could actually refund her the whole shipping costs which um she thought was really great so that was nice at an estate sale i found this really nice set of botanical very cottagecore like mugs and they're nice because they're porcelain mugs but they also had a porcelain kind of um filter in there and a lid as well which is always good when you're sitting outside enjoying your beverage to keep all those nasty little insects away <laughs> i think i paid around maybe four euros maybe for the whole set or maybe three of those mugs and i sold them for 28 because i did have a sale going on to the united states on a thrift trip here in the netherlands i found a set of holland zalber dishes well, I, well not dishes i found a teapot and i found a matching quite large mug and i love Zellberg. they have really really well made things and the inside a lot of times is glazed and speckled and the outside has this kind of rough texture i think that their items are so nice that one was bought by a lady in uh, estonia and um, the original price was 65 euros but i had a sale so she paid 52 for both items together i got these for i think like a euro a piece so my total profit was around 50 which was um, also really good. Then I also got a set of East German espresso cups. And sometimes I have those items where I'm thinking like, am I ever gonna sell those? Maybe that's just so hit or miss, I'm never gonna sell those. And those are a lot of times the items that I, for some reason, sell, which sometimes I do not understand. But I, I paid like, I think two euros or something like that for the whole set made in East Germany, but I did thrift them here in the Netherlands. I asked my mom actually, did you even have espresso back then in East Germany? Because my parents are East German and she's like, yeah, the rich people probably did. So yeah, that's communism for you. I originally asked 24 euros for them, but I still had my, my dishes sale going on at that time. And with a discount, I got 19 euro 20 cents for them. And they went, I didn't remember if I said that, but they actually went to the United States as well. Lots of American people buy my stuff, which I think is really cool. So then I have an item, which is definitely an item I definitely learned from a very big mistake. I bought this set of Dutch ceramics, Gouda pottery, and I sold the large ginger jar. And that one sold for 65 euros. And the lady also paid shipping at all. So with shipping and everything, she paid like a little more than 100 euros. And I sent that one off with the track and trace. And I sent it off at the beginning of November and that package is still lost. It's gone and um, they're still looking for it. But if they don't find it in a couple weeks, all that package is completely gone. And usually I say I don't <sighs> refund people because it's like a drawing choice. You didn't do insured shipping. But it's kind of hard if you're a starting seller because there is a high chance they give you like a one star review and that just sucks. I learned that from now on I'll just uh, always do in short shipping. So everything I sold since then, even though the people didn't always pay for it, I just added my two euros more and I'm like, just have it in short because in case it gets lost or broken, I'm covered. Speaking of in short uh, shipping <laughs> mistakes, um, here we go with the next one. So I sold a planter, a West Germany planter by Marai. That one I got, I think, for free. Yes, that one I got for free, so I paid zero for it. I sold it for 25 to somebody in the UK, and the UK Postal Service was probably like, let's just play catch-all with that thing. Because when it arrived, it was broken. As I said, I usually don't refund when people don't put it, like, purchase the insured shipping. But I felt so bad for the guy, because he was like, yeah, it was actually a present for my wife. Um, for Christmas and I just wanted to took it out of the box to wrap it and it's just broken and I was like you know what I'll just refund you the money and um, that hurt <laughs> so I refunded him everything so that one I made zero on and probably lost a little bit of money so that kind of sucked but that as I said was definitely a lesson I learned if you like this video make sure to check out these ones here on this side because I post a new video about thrifting and secondhand finds every single week 
Thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, then make sure you do so you won't miss any of my other videos. I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day. Bye.